All right, so this is a, uh, just kind of testing the audio. We'll kind of get into it. My notifications are not pushing. I'm definitely subscribed to my channel. They used to push. So that's, that's working. Let's see. Just trying to figure out why my notifications aren't pushing. But anyway, so it's a little different. Okay. All right. Uh, so, greetings, scholars. Greetings, YouTube. Uh, beautiful mind here with our next installment. And here we have our fifth uh, installment for College Algebra One for Morris Brown. Okay. Uh oh. oh. What's going on here? Okay. A little bit okay, and let's see. Okay, so this is like it's fairly short, it's only 15 slides. Uh, we're continuing chapter two on set theory, uh, with section 2.2 subsets. Okay, a few objectives here uh, we like to recognize subsets and use the notation as a subset of it's a proper subset, All right? And then recognize proper subsets and use the notation the proper subnet, subset notation. Determine the number of subsets of a set and apply concepts of subsets and equivalent sets to infinite sets, okay? Let's see, I feel like there are some settings where I can like, I kind of want the stuff to hide until I'm ready to use it. And it's, it's like, it's very sometimes, -y. sometimes it hides, sometimes it doesn't. Some of the stuff, anyway. Uh, let's see, so subsets. Definition of a subset of a set. Set A, grab this. So the definition of a subset of a set, set A is the subset of set B expressed as A is a subset of B, if every element in set A is also an element in set B. Uh, the notation is a subset with a slash through it means that A is not a subset of B. Set A is not a subset of B if there's at least one element of set A that is not an element of set B, right? So usually with these symbols, when you see a slash through it, that just means negation or is not. Every set of a subset is, every set is a subset of itself, right? Okay. So right is a subset or is, now why did the symbol change? Yeah, I think that needs to be a bar. Let me, um, a little purple. Looks like there should be, or yeah, let me, um, I can use this image here. So I'll take this guy. Um, I just want to copy and delete. Come on. Come on, there we go. And I'd like to paste. Paste image. Allow the paste. All right, so then, it's pretty good. Okay, so this is a, it looks a little bit different, but that's okay. All right, so so right either um, is a subset of or is not a subset of in the blank to form a true statement. So the set A. Is it a subset or is it not a subset of set B? In set A, we have one, three, five, one, three, five, seven, and B, we have one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. Yeah, it's set is a subset of set B, right? So we would do this symbol. Um, a, a is a subset of B. A is a set of all X such that 
X is an element in the word proof, or sorry, X is a letter in the word proof. And I guess it's supposed to be B. Man, this thing is chocolate over typos. It's supposed to be B. Is a set of all Y such that Y is a letter in the word roof? Okay, A is not a subset of B because there is um, there's a letter that's in A that's not in B, namely the P. So then we would say that A is not a subset of B. Okay, so we got subset. They're using a symbol again. Uh, it should be. Maybe, I mean, it's, the symbol's not necessarily wrong. wrong. Let me think about it. I feel like it should be this, though. Because we haven't talked about when the bar is not there, so that's always reason doing this. Uh, we'll go with it for now. Yeah, we haven't talked about proper subset. We're just talking about it now. Anyway, uh, wait a minute. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Wait. Yeah, I got the slash. Yeah, okay. So definition of a proper subset of a set. So set A is a proper subset of B expressed as A is a proper subset of B. If set A is a subset of set B and sets A and B are not equal, right? So in other words, like we're saying that A is completely contained within B, right? In the previous example, the sets could be equal, right? If the sets are equal, a set is a subset of itself. So that's why, I, that's like, well, that's just where that bar was coming into place. A proper subset means that A, not only is A contained in B, but A is also not equal to B. So, is that this proper symbol? Right, either a subset or proper subset or both in the blank to form a true statement. Let me think about this. I'm just trying to think if they have the, the proper symbols. So I feel like those might be off. Let's look at this. So then we have A is a set of all X such that X is a person and lives in San Francisco. B is a set of all X such that X is a person and lives in <clears throat> and lives in California. Okay. So notice that San Francisco is contained within the state of California. So A is a proper subset of B. So maybe, maybe they, maybe the, but we hadn't talked about this. So let me, let me go back a little bit. Yeah, it needs to be a bar. And I feel like this one might be, I feel like it's supposed to be like, a proper subset or not a proper subset, but but I mean because they have that both, I think this the symbol might be proper, might be correct. Um, so this is a proper subset and it's a subset. So this this one I would say is both actually. Yeah, this one could be both. And that, like that's why I'm kind of like pausing because if, if those symbols kind of will change things, but this should be fine for now. Um, I go like this. Not only is it a subset, but it's also a proper subset. I'll copy from that. So A and B, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. So um, they're equivalent. It's not a proper subset, but it is a subset. A, a subset. So it should just be that one. Because they're equivalent, they're equal, right? Same size with the same elements. So for a for the first part, it was both. The second one, it was just as a subset, right? Okay, I feel like that's correct. So subsets in the empty set. Let me see. Oh, we're almost done with this section. 
So the empty set of a subset uh, for any set B, the empty set is a subset of that set. For any set B other than the empty set, the empty set is a proper subset of B. It's completely contained within it, right? So the set with no elements is a subset of all sets. Yep. And it's also for any set B other than the empty set, as long as B is not the empty set, then the empty set is a proper subset of that, of that set, right? Which means that it's completely contained within that set. Okay. Like a set is not a proper subset of itself. So that's why that second part says that B can't be the empty set for that to be true. Okay, right here. So let's see, we have the set, the number of elements, uh, list of all distinct subsets and number of subsets, right? So first we consider the empty set. How many elements are in the empty set? Zero. List of all distinct subsets is just the set itself. And number of subsets is one. Notice that that one is two to the power of zero, okay? So now we have a set containing one element. How many elements are in this set? There's only one element. The li a list of all distinct subsets is a set containing A and the empty set. Number of distinct subsets are two. Notice that two is two to the power of one, okay? Now a set with, with two elements, again, we have two elements in the set. The list of all distinct subsets, well, you have the set containing A and B, that's, that's the set itself, that's the first subset. The set containing A, the set containing B, and the empty set. Number of subsets is four. Notice that that's two squared, or two to the power of two. Continue the pattern. Notice that this is two to the power of three, okay? So as we increase the number of elements in the set, one by one, or by one, the number of subsets doubles. The number of subsets of a set with n elements is gonna be two to the power of n. The number of proper subsets of a set with n elements is gonna be two to the power of n minus one. Okay. So find the number of subsets and the number of proper subsets, okay? So the number of subsets, is gonna be what? One, two, three, four, two to the power of five. So for subsets, um, what is that? 32 subsets. It's kind of lagging a bit. Um, and the number of proper subsets is gonna be what? 31 proper so subsets. Oh, let's go here. Okay. Let's go to The set of all x such that x is a natural number and x is greater than or equal to nine and less than or equal to 15. So let's, let's, let's actually list out those elements, right? So this is gonna be the set natural numbers from nine to 15. So nine, nine 10, 11, 12, I don't know why it's lagging, so 13, 14, and 15. How many elements are here? Let me see what are, we want the number of subsets, the proper subsets. We have two, four, six, seven. So we're gonna have a total of two to the power of seven subsets. Let's see, 32, 64, 128 subsets. So that means that we'll have 127 proper subsets. Okay. 32, 31, 128, 127. Okay. See it here. 
128 subsets, 127 proper subsets. Okay. Um, so this symbol is called Aleph, right? This first one is called, there are Aleph null natural numbers. Um, it has two to the Aleph null subsets and it has two to the Aleph null minus one proper subsets. Uh, two to the power of Aleph null is bigger than Aleph null. So what Aleph null is, this little weird symbol, um, is, is one of the ways that we count infinity, right? Um, so if you think about the natural numbers, right? So you have numbers one, two, three, four, five, so on and so on, and we wanted to count it. Well, even though it goes on forever, if, if we could count forever, we could count that set, right? And if that, so that's one level of infinity. We call that a, count, a countable set of infinity, right? So Aleph null just means a countable set of infinity. So examples would be the natural numbers, the integers, the whole numbers. These are all infinite sets, but if we could count forever, we can count all of those numbers, right? So that's what Aleph null, this little zero is, right? So we denote two to the power of Aleph null by Aleph one. So Aleph one, um, Aleph null is the smallest uh, transfinite cardinal number in an infinite hierarchy or, or different infinities, right? So Aleph null is countable infinity, like trying to count the natural numbers. So to extend that further, you know, we, we just mentioned that the natural numbers, the, the, the cardinality, the cardinality of the natural numbers is Aleph null. We can show that the cardinality of the integers is also Aleph null. It's the same, it's basically a countable, a, a countable set, an infinite countable set. So then what if we wanted to count the real numbers, right? Real numbers are gonna be, it's gonna include your, your integers, your, all your fractions and all your irrational numbers, right? So if we wanted to count the real numbers, suppose we started at number one, what's the next number? You might be tempted to say, oh, on the reals, well, it's two. Well, the reals, remember, also includes all our fractions and decimals. So between one and two, there's also 1.5. Oh, well, so 1.5 is next. Well, bec between one and 1.5, you got what? You could say 1.1, right? Oh, well, 1.1 is next. No because between one and 1.1, you got 1.01. Oh, so then 0.01 is next. No, right? Every number, any number other than one that you choose, there's an infinite number of numbers between one and whatever number you choose other than one, right? So the idea is that the real numbers are so compact and so dense, you can't even begin to count that set. There's so many numbers in that set, you can't even begin to count, right? So whereas with the integers or the, 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 the natural numbers, even though it's infinite, you could count all of those numbers. The natural numbers, one, two, three, four, like you can actually devise a feasible way to count those. If you wanted to try to count the reals, again, that set is so dense, you can't even begin, like once you start at one, you can't get to the next number if you're trying to count in a discrete fashion. So we, we, we uh, articulate the number of elements in the reals as, what you see that, that last symbol was Aleph one, right? It's, which is essentially two to the power of Aleph null. Um, so Aleph null is the smallest transfinite cardinal number in an infinite hierarchy of different infinities. So, you know, so trying to count the reals is like the next level of trying to count infinity. We call, we call Aleph one, we call that an uncountable um, set of infinity, right? So the, the, the natural numbers is a countable set of infinity, which we capture as Aleph null. The real numbers is an example of an uncountable set of infinity. It's so dense, you can't even begin to count it. So that's uncountable set of infinity, right?
So just a little bit of uh, interesting, you know, concepts in counting, right? You know, and I keep getting these, like, I keep flashing in my mind, Buzz Lightyear to infinity and beyond, right? That's basically what we're talking about, beyond different types of infinity. You know, then, then the next question is, well, are there like higher levels of infinity beyond that, right? And I, I honestly, right now, I wouldn't know. I had to like dig and think about it, you know? And I, I feel like there are, you know, just using like a little bit of intuition. Like then it's like, okay, well, what's the limits? Like, what are these different types of infinity? How can we articulate them or, you know, are, do they exist, right? So that's what mathematicians do. Like we play around with these concepts and these theorems and stuff and we try to prove or disprove one one or another, right? So let me go ahead and make a copy of this available. It's a box. I know I just sent something, so this should all be good. All right. So if you use that box link that I posted in the announcements or dashboard, um, you should be able to access this. And I'm pretty sure by the next class, you guys will let me know if you can't access the PDS or not. Okay. All right, let me see if there's anything else. Uh, so we just completed our fifth official recording over section 2.2 subsets. Um, you can anticipate the next recording to become available shortly, right? So for week two, our goal is to finish chapter two. So my personal goal is to make these videos available before we get to week two. Um, obviously, all the, all the recordings are available for week one. And my goal, again, is to make these available. Okay, on that note, we're going to end the session here. And from one beautiful mind to another, enjoy the rest of your day. Ladies and gentlemen, take care. Peace.